Hello, this is Mrs. Bobby, and we are back for lesson seven. If you're looking for this in your notes, it's a combination of page 35 and 37. And what we're going to do here is we're going to be seeing how algebra meets up with geometry. Um, now, remember, a variable is the letter that we use. And here we're going to be taking a look at lengths and widths of rectangles and the volume in just a little bit but we're going to show you how variables come into play and how we are going to make those variables become numbers all right so we look at our typical length and our width and those are two variables and lengths you length the way to look at it is usually from your left to your right and width is from your front to your back but since it's a two-dimensional shape it's almost like it's the up and down motion um, sometimes kids and different level teachers uh, might teach this formula instead of length times width they might teach it base times height same concept so let's take a look at this if we get a rectangle is broken up to a bunch of little boxes we can easily easily find the length by just simply counting the boxes across the bottom so we have one two three four five six seven so our length here is seven but and our width is considered four um, of boxes so when we go down to the chart here we'll call this a we'll call this b this one and then over here on b so we have our length which is seven our width which is four the formula is area equals length times width. And putting that in place, we would have 7 times 4. And our final outcome would be 7 times 4, which is 28. Since it has, it doesn't have a label, we can just put a unit. And we have to put it to the second power because these are squared units. And an easy way to remember this is since it's a rectangle, it is two dimensional so we would use the little two but when we get to the volume that is three dimensional so we'd use a little three so when we're looking at the other one when there's not little boxes that we can count uh, they generally would give us a number so on this one we're looking at the length as being 46 meters and our width is being 32 so we're going to have our area equals length times width which area equals 46 times 32. And then we're gonna have our final answer here. So I'm just gonna put the math over here. I'm not gonna talk our way through it because um, we know that there will be a delay of some kind. So our rectangle's area is 1,472. This does have a label meters squared. So notice that we take our length and our width and we're replacing them with numbers. That's the concept of this unit. So now we're gonna be moving this down. We generally have this little tiny thing for my light that I try to make it a little less blurry. There we go. Uh, now we have two here, but we're only going to do one of them. We'll just do this one right here. So if you notice here, we're not just dealing with a length. We have a length. We have the width, which sticks back, and we have a height. So we have a length. We have a width and we have a height. So our formula for this particular one will be volume equals length times width times height. Pretty sure you learned that one in science. So our length here will be 12, our width will be five, and our height will be 15. So when we take a look at this particular problem, we have volume equals length times width times height. 
volume equals 12 times 5 times 15. And we can easily do our math on the side. So our volume will equal 900 and we have a units label and we have a little three because remember the little three is needed because we are in a three dimensional shape. Not to mention we're using three sets of numbers, length times width times height. So big V, little three above, big A, little two. Well, that's what we have today. And as always, I love math. And of course, DC.